Jason, great to have you back on the show. Thanks for having me back. Walk me through the quarter, especially given the fact that this has been uh, a driving headline this morning for the results, the fact that you aren't seeing any impact from inflationary pressures on, on custard, customer demand, uh, and you're continuing to show signs of growth across key metrics right now. That's right. We have not seen any impact. Um, our quarter uh, over quarter numbers look great. Our year over year numbers look great. Our cohorts are incredibly healthy. Um, and on top of that, we found a number of cost efficiencies we identified and have several other efforts underway, um, which is what really allowed us to both um, beat top and bottom line this past quarter, as well as raise top and bottom line guidance for the rest of the year. And that guidance doesn't factor in uh, a launch in Canada. It doesn't factor in the Golden Nugget purchase that just closed last night as well. How would you expect those to contribute to the financials over the coming months? Well, as we noted on the earnings call, uh, even with the, you know, obviously a new launch in Ontario is going to carry some upfront investment. But even with that investment, we'll still be better than where we guided to last quarter for total year EBITDA. Um, and obviously, we'll have significant acceleration on the top line both this year and in future years from both of those things. So I think Golden Nugget's going to add a ton of synergy, which will eventually make its way to the bottom line. Ontario will obviously contribute meaningful contribution profit, and both will grow top line in this year and beyond. Now, we know in the states where sports betting, mobile sports betting, is already uh, alive and well, it's been very competitive. It's been very promotional. We have a number of states here in the U.S. Uh, set to roll out this type of option as well. Uh, walk me through the competitive landscape and what that's going to mean in terms of marketing and in terms of investment for DraftKings. Well, it's really rationalized quite a bit over the last quarter or so. Um, we've seen a dramatically different competitive environment and that a lot of what we deem to be uneconomical customer offerings or media purchasing is not happening as much or really at all anymore. Um, we've sort of stuck to the same playbook, uh, you know, two to three year paybacks on new customer investments, two to three year pass to profitability in states. What we're seeing, though, is we might actually now, through some efficiency opportunities identified, as well as a rationalizing competitive environment, we may actually have an opportunity to pull both of those things in to get both faster paybacks on our customer acquisition investments, as well as faster uh, path to profitability in new states that we launched, largely due to uh, a much quicker developing um, and, and higher use of the, uh, excuse me, higher adoption from the population of new states we've launched recently, like New York and Arizona. Hey, speaking of new states, Jason, I wonder, do you think that the, the broad, the macro, the slowing environment we're in is going to push states who've held out um, toward maybe taking another look at legalization? Or is that, at the state level, is that just too hard a needle to move right now? Well, I think it certainly adds to, you know, the attractiveness when states are in search of new revenues and, um, you know, they don't want to raise taxes on their citizens and they have, you know, companies that are voluntarily willing to pay taxes to help raise those revenues. That, I think, is a very attractive value proposition in any economic environment, but certainly more so in one where states are not flush with cash the way they have been for the last year or two. So um, I think there's a number of factors that affect what happens in every state. Each state has its own unique politics. But, um, you know, on an overall macro level, I think you're right that that will help gain more momentum. 